Flex claims to have the most powerful rear handle circular saw. We'll find out in just a moment. I'm Tim Johnson. You're watching Shop Tool Reviews. Got my cut. Today we're reviewing the Flex FX2141R-1J if you want the kit like we see it here with the 10 amp hour stack lithium battery and the rapid charger and the saw. You can get that as one kit and we'll talk about pricing here in just one moment. Now this is a seven and a quarter inch rear handled brushless motor saw driven by their 24 volt battery platform. Now Flex has some specific features that you won't find on other saws and that's in addition to the 24 volt stacked lithium battery. Let's go ahead and dive in deep and look at these features then we'll actually use it. We'll really try to put this thing through the ringer then we'll come back and talk about pricing and about warranty and even our final thoughts. We've got the Flex FX2141R-1J with this kit here which includes the 10 amp hour stacked lithium battery and uh, the 280 watt rapid charger. We'll go over those things here in one moment. Obviously comes with a blade as well, 24 tooth uh, framing blade. Now this is supposed to be the king of rear handle saws. This is the new beast uh, that just will really rip through about anything, uh, pun intended. We get a brushless motor and more than just a brushless motor, Flex came out with their sensor free brushless motor. There are sensors. It's not like that they're not using sensors in a brushless motor. You have to use sensors when you have a brushless motor, but the sensors are not on board the brushless motor like most brushless motors are. They're able to relocate the sensors in a better place so that they can optimize and maximize not only space, but also performance. So uh, up to 6,200 RPM in this rear handle saw. Very large compartment for the 24 volt battery. And as I mentioned, we'll be running a 10 amp hour in it. And there's plenty of room for that. We'll see here in one moment. Uh, we also see a rafter hook right there that tucks away right there beside the battery. I like that offset on that, uh, that little dog leg on that rafter hook to keep it out of the way to tuck it away as much as possible because if it didn't have that dog leg, we'd be sticking up about right here. So I like the fact that we're kind of tucking that away while we don't need it. Um, that's big enough we can hang on any two by material, any rafter, joist, um, probably even some three by as well. That looks at least two and a half inches wide. So the base plate on this or the foot plate, whatever you want to call this thing, is made of magnesium. So we get a magnesium base plate and then our numbers here on our depth adjustment you see here we can easily just by push down to tighten pull up to loosen and by the way if you ever want to change where the angle is on this lever you know you can pull that clip off and put it wherever you want to and then put that clip back on so just know that no that's not stuck there for life you can move that lever to make it to where it's comfortable for you to loosen and tighten Anyway, once we loosen this, and by the way, a, a rear handle, many times you're plunge cutting with it. So you'll see a lot of framers, they'll leave that pretty loose and do a lot of plunge cutting with this by leaving that really loose. The markings here on the depth are very easy to see. In fact, I really like them. I've, I've heard people complain about them, but I, I think it's because they don't understand them. Rather than just having a marker that, you know, or a pointer that points at something, these are like curved lines. In other words, to match the contour, of this uh, semicircle right there. So you can see if I want two by material, I'll line it up right there, tighten it down, and there's my two by material. I'm gonna go all the way down to max cut of two and five eighths of an inch. So that's gonna cut my three by material all the way down here. And you can see down here, the mark goes all the way across because obviously we don't have a gap to span. And it's that nice curve to match the curvature of our lever there. So if I want three quarter inch plywood, Lock that down, which is also one by lumber. And again, so markings on there are very easy to read, even though most of the time you're probably just given kind of uh, what you think it's gonna be and make that cut, whether you're cutting all the way through and, or you're just wanting to score something or not cut as deep, chisel out some wood, what have you anyway. So the markings are there if you want to use them. So there's our depth. Now, as far as angle or bevel, we're here right on the front. And like the depth, uh, our adjuster is right there so flip of the lever and then we can adjust that angle and again the same way here if we want to take that clip off we can change the angle of wherever that lever ends up 
We also have a, uh, a detent lock or a detent adjuster, not a detent adjuster. Basically, these are detents to set for the max angle. And you see all the way here on the left is 22 and a half degrees. And let me show you how that works. So now the detent's right here. If I open this lever up and I throw the bevel all the way over, it stops at the detent at 22 and a half degrees. So I can lock that down. And so you, you see, here's our 22 and a half degree mark. There is our pointer. And so that's basically set the max adjustment. Now, if I loosen this up, and then I change that detent to the next notch, which is 45 degrees. Now the, it's going to stop at 45 degrees. And then if I want the full 56 degrees, yes, this will cut a 56 degree bevel. Turn that all the way to the 56 degree mark. Now I can go all the way and cut my 56 degree bevel if I need to go that far. So again, these are your max detents. Put that back down to 45 and leave it right there. You see, we have our extraction port right here or uh, dust chute, um, particle chute, whatever you want to call this. This is where everything's ejected out of this saw. Probably not a lot are going to hook up dust extraction on a, on a framing or a rear handle saw. But in case you want to, you can do it right there. And you can also angle this kind of out of your way, shooting it, shooting it out the front if you're not extracting it with a dust extractor or shop vac and be able to eject that material out away from you. Very comfortable ergonomic handle, rubber over molding here, pretty aggressive. Flex gets very aggressive on their grips. I don't see that good or bad. I guess you could see it good that you can hold onto it better and that's great. The rubber over molding is good. I mean, easy to grip this. Um, you know, it's not too aggressive by any means and uh, just as, as comfortable to hold, it's not going to bother you, I don't believe. Uh, trigger lock here. So I do have to push it every time I pull the trigger. Got to slide that out of the way. If I don't, it's going to lock that out. And it's ambidextrous, so if you're grabbing with your left hand, you can push it that, that way and unlock that trigger as well. Something nice about this, on the base plate, we have our zero degree cut mark and our 45 degree cut mark. So obviously we can see on our sight line of, of where we're cutting. However, we'll also look back here and right in here, if you can see it, is a zero and a 45 degree as well. So we can look down in here and see where our line is and make sure that we're lined up. And even more, back here in the back, right here in the back, again, zero and 45 degrees. So we've got a, we've got a mark um, or a line that's drawn all the way across and we even want to plunge cut. We can line it up here, line it up in the front, line it up in the back and be able to plunge at 90 or at 45 degrees and be able to see where we're going to cut with our blade. I really like that, especially when you're trying to make precise cuts, whether it be in uh, uh, like plywood, uh, make an opening, something like that, or even in rip cutting lumber and uh, making some specific cuts. That's very nice to have that. Now let's throw the battery in here in a moment, but let's go over it real quick. This is their 10 amp hour stacked lithium. This is a beast. Uh, so it weighs a little bit, but again, we're using a rear handle saw. We're not looking for lightness, right? We're not looking for um, minimalism. We're looking for the beast of a saw to make the cuts that we got to cut, get through the day and get done. The 10 amp hour stack lithium is a powerful, powerful battery. New stack technology, so we're not using cells anymore. Uh, this is the stack lithium, and it is going to be able to pump up the power up to 720 cross cuts is what they're claiming from one battery. Something I love about flex batteries is the fuel gauge. So I can push this button here and there's no question about it, how much juice we've got left in that battery. Those big green lights that are on both sides light up and you can see it from a mile away that we've got a full charge. I love that about flex. Also, I've mentioned this before about flex tools. They know what they're doing when it comes to brushless motors and battery technology. They've been doing it for a long time. They do it for other companies and they understand this stuff. So when it comes to batteries and chargers and even brushless motors, Flex knows what's going on and they know how to do it right. They know how to do it very well and now very powerful as well. Something else I wanted to point out before we throw this blade on here, if I pull the trigger, so you see we get an LED light up here that's shining right here where we need to see right in front of that blade so that we can see our cut line, our sight line and know where we're cutting. Now let's throw our blade in there. 
Since it is a blade left saw, we know it's going to be reverse thread. Uh, leave that inner ring in there. Gonna go lefty tidy. And by the way, the onboard wrench is right here in the back of the saw. And then the arbor lock is right here. Easy to get to, that button right there. Push that and make sure that our saw blade is nice and tight. Also like that, we get an electronic brake, 1,001, so less than a second, that's stopping. 1,001 without, so about two seconds to get up to speed, and about one second to stop. 1,001, yep, so about one second to stop. Let's go use this. Let me point out one more thing. I talked about the battery gauge. Look here, so now the battery's in the saw. The battery gauge is on the side of the battery, right? I think you're already seeing it here. We've got a window right there where we can see that gauge. So we don't have to pull that battery out to see that. We don't have to look down in some crevice. We can see right there through that window, we've got a full charge on that battery. Okay, let's start out with a couple of straight cuts. We've got our depth cut all the way down, our depth set all the way down. And let's see how it does. Set our bevel, 45. Right away, I like that I can stand right over top of the saw. I'm right-handed, left hand here, so handle both handles, and I can see my front line, no problem. I can also see my line right here on the front side of the foot plate, but down through this gap, I'm looking straight overhead. And then I can also see the blade. I'm not going to point at the blade, but I can also see that blade. Powering through those cuts with no problem whatsoever. Do a bevel at a 45. Again, makes it very easy that I can see this mark here. I can see the mark on the other side of the front of the, the foot plate, and I can see my blade. So even at a 45 bevel, still easy to see where my cut line is. Pushed it pretty hard, got it to stop, but really harder than you would normally push. Uh, pressure treated wood, I'm getting showered in dust. Do a plunge. So again, I can line up my mark on the front. Line up, line up my mark on the back. 
Make my plunge cut. Plenty of power. Let's go ahead and make a bevel cut. Start my cut. I can easily see my mark at my 45. I can easily see the sight line or the cut line down at my blade. We're ejecting all our dust way away from us. My sight line is staying clear right in front of the blade. Nice, clean cut, powering through, no problem at all. Let's make one more of those. Wow. You know, one thing we forgot to do is actually weigh this saw. Kind of looking back through things and realize, you know what? We didn't go over the weight of this guy. I think we pulled it out and got ready to do it and just never did it. We'll get it zeroed out and we'll put the saw on it. And we're looking at 10 pounds, three ounces, and then let's add the battery. So 13 pounds, 10 ounces. So not a light saw, but again, as we said earlier, this is a beast of a saw. This is the saw you're looking for to cut your biggest and baddest stuff. You're cutting your three quarter inch ply, your three quarter inch uh, particle board, or your flooring, your sheathing, all of that. Sometimes you're double, triple stacking it as well, making your cuts. You're doing bevel cuts and rip cutting, two by material, pressure treated material, burying four by material, what have you. This is the saw you want. So it's not gonna be a light saw, right? Performance wise, this thing is absolutely impressive. You can push this thing just about as hard as you want to. Yes, I was able to push it hard enough to actually stop it. It actually went into kind of an, an override. All I had to do was release the trigger, pull it back again, and I was off to the races. So it didn't overheat or anything like that, but it just sensed what was going on, shut the saw down because I was pushing extremely hard. But you can shove this thing pretty hard and get an excellent cut, even in a bevel. When I was rip cutting at a 45 degree bevel, did not stall this saw whatsoever. Yes, I took my time, make sure I was cutting straight, but that's what you're gonna do when you're cutting at a bevel. I don't think you're moving as fast as you can. Well, as fast as you can and still stay on your line. But regardless, this thing is the most powerful saw that we have tested. Um, Flex has got this priced at $399 for the kit, $249 for the bare tool. I think that's a steal when you look at what it actually does and how powerful it is and compared to other saws. Now, yes, you only get one battery with that kit, so it's the 10 amp hour stack lithium battery, but that's, the, that's a beast of a battery. We made a bunch of cuts and we're still, and you, you saw all the rip cuts as well as the bevel rips, and we still got three out of four cells or three out of four lights lit up on the battery. So still a good amount of battery left in this, so this is gonna not only pump out the power, but also last you several cuts. Now, warranty on this is out the gate five years. However, if when you buy this within 30 days, if you register it online, you get the founder's warranty, which is a lifetime warranty on the battery and the saw. So make sure if you do buy this and you buy it before the end of this year, so before December 31st, 2022, you have 30 days to register it and get the founder's warranty, which again is the lifetime warranty. So out the gate five years, and if you register the tool within 30 days of purchase and you buy it before the end of the year, you're going to get a lifetime warranty. We'll have a link or two in the description, so check that out. Again, it's the Flex FX2141R-1J if you want this kit. Keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. And if you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already? And by all means, if you hated our video, then give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day and keep smiling.